The episode begins with everything seeming to be really blurry inside. Someone is panicking, looking for something here and there in the ground near the lake. A coin drops out of the bush, and there it is. That was what the person was looking for. By that time, it was already dark, and the person was seen hurrying through the streets towards a vending machine with the same sign as the coin. The person gets a drink from the vending machine, and a mystery man is seen coming out of the machine, who thanks the person for bringing him the coin. Everything going on was a mystery. Next, it is morning now, and crows are seen feasting on a dead animal near a school. A third-year school student, Kage, is seen talking to the academic advisor about his career counseling options. Kage is a pretty good student, but she still turns down the option of going into a good college. Actually, the advisor tried to convince him to go to a good college, but Kage refused anyway. As he left the room, he returned to his class, and some students of the class started asking him about his college recommendations when he informed them that he wouldn't be attending a college. His friends support him, but Kage doesn't look too happy inside. Next, all of them were heading towards the gym class through the ground when Kage got a stinking smell from the dead animal but chose to ignore it instead. On the other hand, a schoolgirl, who is at an isolated hut in a forest, tries to call someone but fails to do so. Meanwhile, at school, career advising is still going on for Nana. When Kage is immersed in his deep thoughts as to what had happened to him, he didn't notice that he was staring directly at his classmate, which made her very uncomfortable, and he came off as a creep to her. After school, Kage was on his cleaning duties, and Nana came to inform Kage about her college recommendation, and she looked pretty happy with it. But she also realized that Kage was more deserving than her. It was night already, and Kage couldn't sleep at all. So he woke up to go get a drink when he realized that he had been experiencing a lot of changes with his body, and his body seemed better and stronger all of a sudden. He gets the smell of a fire close by and rushes to the spot, where he also detects the presence of a human. This is when a disturbing sight is revealed. Kage actually had a beast inside him, and as he got closer to the fire, he started to transform into a beast himself. He transformed into a big, stuffed monster bear. The girl was lying unconscious in the fire when Kage arrived at the scene to rescue her. He proceeds to smash a punch into the wall, carrying her out of the burning place through the hole in the wall. As he laid the girl down on the ground, he began to sniff her and suddenly had an urge to do something bad to her, but stopped as soon as he realized what he was doing. Then, he transformed back into his normal human form. He left the spot but had forgotten to take his phone with him. The next morning, Kage starts to panic as he realizes that he left his mobile phone in the forest last night. It was a concerning situation. As if the police authorities had found out, he would have been arrested. As he reaches school, he gets the familiar smell of the girl whom he saved last night. The girl was standing right there with his phone, and Kage stood there frozen with fear. She knew he was a monster. When the swimming classes began, he tried to sneak into the changing room and take back his phone, but failed as the girl had taken the phone with her. Later, he met up with the girl on the terrace of the building, where she confirmed that she exactly knew that Kage had a different monstrous form, and he tried his best to defend himself, but it was too late. The girl for a while pretended that she had almost believed his story and kept his phone for him to take it back. But when he finally got hold of his phone, she pushed him from the rooftop to the ground. As Kage was falling down, he once again transformed into the monstrous soft toy, and the girl clicked a photo of him. He jumped back to the terrace, but he was now almost too open to be seen by anyone in the school. Both of them went inside the building, and the girl started to corner him to ask about the form he was in and how he got into that form. She threatened him to tell the truth, but he started to panic really hard, as he himself didn't know what was causing him to transform into the monster. As they were walking back home together, the girl introduced herself as Claire Aoki and proceeded to show him a similar coin that was supposedly related to monsters like Shuichi. Both of them finally reached Claire's apartment, and Kageya was a bit nervous as it was his first time being inside a girl's flat. As soon as they reach them, Claire starts changing right in front of Kageya, which makes him really flustered. As she finally changed into her casual clothes, she confessed that Kage had actually ruined her attempt to unalive herself. All of a sudden, an unknown figure was standing right in front of the glass door, who made her way into the house, smacked Kage, and demanded that Claire give her the coin. She tried to corner Claire, but Kage transformed into the monster and held her down. Now, the stranger was cornered but suddenly tried to reveal her true form by transforming herself into a monster similar to Shuichi. The stranger is now shown in a school dress walking around in the ground near the lake when she finds a similar coin. Next, while in school, she was in the changing room when some of the juniors were chatting about the strange vending machine, which made her really frustrated, and she left the changing room. She was actually an athlete, but unfortunately, she wasn't able to qualify for the nationals. It was already dark now, when she made her way to the vending machine and dropped the coin that she had received earlier, in hopes that the vending machine would work. It didn't work immediately, 
But as she was returning back, a blonde male appeared in front of her, who thanked her. The next day, the girl was really fast in the tracks and felt like she could run the fastest. But as she was running, her legs started to transform all of a sudden. She was really scared by what was happening to her. She began to transform into a scary monster. And next, she was desperately looking for the coin that she had found the previous day. That was when she noticed Kage and Claire having a conversation about the mystery coin. She followed them back to her apartment and decided to obtain the coin for herself. Now, back to the present, Shuichi was getting beaten up badly by her, and somehow Claire managed to pepper spray the stranger's eyes to distract her. While she expected Shuichi to kill her, Shuichi escaped with her from the scene instead. It was dark already, and the both of them were hiding at the back of some alleyway, but Kageya had a lot of questions for Claire. He was so confused as to why Claire was so prepared for the situation and what was the mystery behind those coins. But now, the both of them had a bigger problem. The girl was desperately chasing them to find and kill them. So, Claire suggested that the best option here would be to kill the girl, but Kageya wasn't sure about that idea. Suddenly, Claire discovers a hidden chain behind Chuichi. The chain behind him could only mean that he had a different true form and that something else was inside of him. But as she proceeded to open the chain, surprisingly, there was nothing. His insides were totally empty. By this revelation, Kageya felt pretty low and depressed, but this was not the time to be depressed, as they had an enemy following them. Claire suggested that they had to do something to get out of the situation. And the best thing to do would be that Claire to get inside of the costume of Shuichi and be one to fight the enemy. Shuichi had a sticky inside, but once Claire stepped inside of him, he could truly feel that both of them were now one. Both of them could now feel each other's presence inside of each other and all of each other's emotions. But all of a sudden, the enemy appeared. She had finally found them. She began to attack them mercilessly and was looking for Claire, but couldn't find her anywhere. Claire was also adjusting to the costume and couldn't quite figure out how to exactly operate it. But suddenly, the enemy was struck with a strong punch by the both of them. But nothing much changed as the enemy continued to beat the hell out of them. All of a sudden, Claire started to fight back, as now, she had finally gotten the hang of it. Now, she was throwing continuous punches at her enemy. Shuichi was feeling uncomfortable with what was happening, but Claire continued to beat her up anyway. Next, as Claire threatened to snap her leg if she didn't answer her questions, the girl chose to stay silent, so she got her leg broken. But even after Shuichi's requests not to kill the girl, Claire shot her dead with the gun. Everything seemed like a nightmare to Shuichi. Since that day, a week had already passed, and Shuichi had tried to cope up with his normal daily routine of going to school, hanging out with friends, etc. But one day, he gets a call from Claire while in class but decides not to answer it, so Claire shows up to his class. As they walked home, Claire was relieved that nobody found out that both of them were the culprits behind the murder. As Claire was describing how amazing she felt, Shuichi felt disgusted and asked her to discontinue the idea of joining forces together. But then Claire asked him if he was enough to take care of the monsters by himself. After a while, Shuichi decides to follow her back to another garage, where he feels really hopeless and depressed about the whole situation. Claire starts to get flashbacks of her own terrible memories, but she reassures him that nothing is going to happen to him as long as he was with Claire. And if he was to die, Claire would happily die with him so that he wasn't alone even in death. Shuichi decides to test her to see if she was actually telling the truth about dying with him, when Claire didn't even hesitate to give up her life for him. But then she was saved by Shuichi once again. As she lies in Shuichi's arms, she reveals that the real reason why she needs his help is to find her elder sister, who also turned into a monster similar to Shuichi and killed her parents. She was also irritated by this whole mess with the monsters and wanted to deal with it. Now, a flashback of a year earlier is shown. The same mystery blonde man is seen granting the wish of a schoolgirl who wishes for someone else. This girl also happens to have the same keychain as the form of the monster which Shuichi turned into. This girl wishes for someone she desperately wants to be with, who is Shuichi. But who is this girl? The mystery blonde man is again shown. This time he is testing the mystery coins against the phone. And magically the coins don't show up in the camera of the phone. He is a bit disappointed, but he has hopes about finding someone, using the humans of planet Earth. Back at Claire's flat, it's a Sunday, and Shuichi has also visited her but is shocked by the pile of junk lying around on the floor. Today the both of them had planned to be one, once again. Suddenly Claire starts to take her clothes off which made Kage a bit uncomfortable but flustered at the same time. This made Claire explain that, due to his insides being really sticky, her clothes get wet as well. But, if she was without clothes, she would avoid the same problem. Their main goal was to get to know about the mysteries of the transformation of Kage, the coin and what was causing the rise of these monsters in this town. She also explains that since it was summer, Shuichi's warm insides made her feel really hot but he suggested she wear a swimsuit instead. Once again she entered Shuichi and the both of them became one. 
Then, they try out different combinations and discover that Claire had more power and grip over Shuichi's body than he himself. Next, as they finally cleaned her apartment, she showed Shuichi her sister's school uniform, using which Shuichi could find his sister as Shuichi had a very good sense of smell. Shuichi asked Claire if she was sure that her sister was the one who killed their parents. Actually, half a year earlier, when she returned from school, she found herself house in shambles and a monster standing right beside the dead bodies of her family. Feeling very nervous, Shuichi slowly began to unzip the bag inside which the uniform was kept. As he revealed the uniform in front of him, he got the smell of blood. It was so intense that the both of them could feel chills in their bones. The uniform didn't just have the blood of their parents but multiple lives were taken by the monster, who was Claire's sister. Next, the both of them went to the superstore to shop for some necessities and when Kageya sat to eat his lunch, Claire praised him for agreeing to look for his sister together. Nana spots both of them together and feels a bit sad. Now, the both of them were waiting patiently at an abandoned building for her sister to show up so that Claire could ask why she became a monster. They figured it was unlikely that her sister had moved out to a different town, but more believable that she has someone who is helping her. They began to chat for a while, but suddenly Kageya turned into a monster, which meant that someone was definitely there. Claire hid behind the windows and was curious to know if he had found someone who smelled similar to her sister. It was a girl on the platform, and Claire quickly rushed out with her camera to capture the classmate of her sister. As she started to search for the classmate, she soon discovered that it was not her classmate, but it was her sister herself. Shuichi was still too frightened by the strong smell that was coming from the person. Claire dropped her camera and wanted both of them to go outside and capture her sister. Once again, Claire got inside of Shuichi and decided to shoot down her sister first to capture her. Both of them sat down behind a bush to try and ambush her. Shuichi was so shocked that she decided to capture her own sister rather than talking things out. Suddenly, her sister appeared right in front of them, and as Claire was about to shoot her down, she was stopped by Shuichi. But now her sister was aware of their presence and all of a sudden a monster had appeared right behind them. Chills ran down his spine, but soon within a fraction of seconds, the whole demeanor of her sister changed and she transformed back into a normal person and started to act really nervous in front of him. She proposes a weird proposition, which means she knew he had come to kill her but suggested they do it somewhere more isolated and quiet. All of it made him so confused, but suddenly she started apologizing for everything that she did and claimed she knew who he was. This touched Claire's heart for a moment. But suddenly, there was another twist and as Claire pointed the gun towards her sister, she started to apologize to Shuichi for everything. This made all of them even more confused. When Alina realized that Shuichi had a girl inside of him, she totally lost it. She started to transform into a monster once again. With a monstrous rage inside her, she ripped apart Shuichi's head. Once she ripped Shuichi's head apart, Claire was frozen in her tracks and her face turned pale before even realizing what was happening in the scene. Shuichi's head was in Alina's hand right now, as the sudden realization hit her that she had actually hurt Shuichi in the process. She tried to calm down and began to panic instead, and woke Shuichi up. While all of this was taking place, something snapped inside of Claire as she ran towards her sister with the gun. But what was this? Even after being shot multiple times, it had literally no effect on her sister and her body morphed with each bullet that failed to hit her. Claire's attacks were useless against the demon who was clearly way out of her league. She tossed Claire around in the air, and she dropped so hard to the ground. Finally, Alina noticed that it was her sister, Claire inside of Shuichi. She asked the reason, to which Claire replied was to kill her sister. Alina was a bit disappointed, but Claire still managed to ask her why she killed their parents. She tried to give a very lame reasoning that her parents were too strict with them and also her dad was apparently a very evil legislator and their mother was involved in an extramarital affair. She further explained that she was no longer a weak, fragile human being who needed her sister. But after all of their conversations, she asked if she still had the coin she gave her. Claire lied about it, so her sister gave her another coin and asked her to take it to a specific location. As her sister left the area, with a call she got, Claire was shattered with the death of Shuichi and was about to end her life too when the detached head of Shuichi began to speak. Shuichi was alive. She was relieved, and then continued on her journey to reach the given location. When they reached the location, she found the mystery blonde man who was waiting there. The man, at first, was very perplexed by the state in which Shuichi was in and started to panic. Then, Claire threw out the coin, which gave him the sign that they actually knew about the coin. He then said that if they wanted the stuffed monster to become okay, then they should probably hand him the coin. The coin was inserted into the weird vending machine and the drink came in. After drinking this drink, Shuichi went back to normal. Claire, after a long while of feeling uneasy, decided to come out of the costume. Now, who was this mystery man? Apparently, this was an alien who had taken the form of an attractive human male. As she got out of the costume, 
The alien appreciated her body and was automatically drawn towards her, but Claire kicked him down. The alien then claimed that he was a good alien. As he had acquired a hair from Claire while he kicked him, he swallowed it and began transforming into Claire. It was clear now, he was the one who had turned Shuichi into the monster he was now. According to him, Shuichi himself desired to be that way and that was, in fact, his true form. Claire then asked the alien to not use her body, but then finally Shuichi was able to change back to his former self. Claire jumped to hug him. But, what was the purpose of this alien? Actually, a group of aliens had crashed into the Earth's surface, and their spaceship was also scattered. He was unable to find his fellow aliens and also those coins were memories that had scattered all over the Earth due to the spaceship crash. The humans who helped find the coins were gatherers, and if they found coins, they would be rewarded with powers by drinking the drinks from the vending machine. The alien also got really excited while also talking about mangas and upcoming books. If they were able to secure more than 100 coins, they would be rewarded with a grand prize which was to have any powers they wished to have, including the powers of the characters of manga. Claire said she'll think about it, and left the spot with Shuichi. It was unlikely that her sister knew Shuichi, but it was clear that the reason why Shuichi turned into the stuffed animal was due to Alina. Claire explains that she's very happy now, then she was back when she lost everything due to her sister. Meeting Shuichi had changed her life a lot. She was also excited about the fact that there was an alien who gave them crazy powers, although Shuichi tried to warn her of the cons involving the whole situation. The next day at school, when a few boys tried to bully Kageya, he instead overpowered them. Now his classmates, too, began to notice that there was something different and more mature about Kage. While Kage was standing alone on the roof of the school, Mifune came along to give him some company. As Shuichi laid down in his bed wondering about the whole situation about the coins, he knew there was a bigger story to the whole thing. The next day, both of them visited the mountain near which the spaceship crashed, in hopes to find more coins. They knew they were about to face a lot of enemies as well in the process, but they were ready for all of it. The episode began with a cute girl with glasses, who also happens to be a gatherer, wandering at the same place where the spaceship had crashed. The sun was scorching hot and she was getting too tired from doing this job. She was too tired to walk when she came across a relatively open area to hunt these coins. To her horror there was another gatherer who threatened her, but the both of them began to fight for the territory to search for coins. Shuichi was really afraid and nervous as usual when he thought about different types of scary monsters that he was about to encounter. The forest was a restricted area, but the both of them entered anyway. Initially, they didn't get the smell or trace of any humans nearby. They begin to plan out strategies as to what to do when a monster actually begins to approach them. But Claire lays out very violent ideas of how to tackle these monsters, which obviously was against what Shuichi believed. Their main goal was not to just find coins, but to gather more and more information about the monsters and the coins. They decided to look in the spots where coins have been found before. It was clear that this forest was going to be full of other monsters, and any human who was in this forest was no normal hiker. Claire was really excited to see how everything goes down and also suggested that he transform into his monstrous form as soon as he encountered someone so as to not reveal his identity to them. As Claire wanted to proceed towards the forest, he got another sensation that someone else was also approaching and was close to 200 meters. He initially wanted to flee from the area, but Claire started to get ready for their encounter with the person. She took off her clothes and got inside Shuichi after he transformed. Both of them sneaked behind a scary-looking monster. The monster was tall and had red glowy eyes. As they approached the monster, it was scarier and was way taller than Shuichi. He was shocked to see them both approach him head-on, as none of the others dared to do so. Claire tried to form an alliance with him, but was shocked when she discovered the real reason why the beast was there. He was only in the forest to see how strong he actually was, as his power was too much for normal human beings to handle. He admits, he might not be thrilled to fight a girl head-on, but there was no other choice left for him. Shuichi panicked and tried to attack the monster, which was a foolish move. Claire then assured him that it was now her turn to take care of the mess. As she strikes a very hard punch into the monster, nothing much happens but when the monster begins striking both of them, it becomes very difficult to dodge, and also it is too tough to keep up with the pace of the monster, even after trying their best. Both of them found themselves in a tough position. She was wrong to use the first monster they fought as an example for the others that they were about to fight. Shuichi started to panic. Meanwhile, Claire tried to talk things out with the monster. She made it clear that she wasn't there to fight him, but rather to collect more information on the coins and the whole situation about this thing. Then the tall monster asks her to prove her innocence. As he begins to approach her, she panics and the both of them decide to shoot him down, but this monster was immune to bullets. All of a sudden, he revealed his human form. He was a student at a university. Now this guy was fired up to try and kill the both of them. This was very scary and bothersome for the both of them. How is it possible to escape such a situation? 
where this monster was about to try a different form of martial arts against them. Both of them flee from the scene, which causes the beast to run around desperately to find the both of them. The beast now was running everywhere when all of a sudden, Shuichi came and locked him tight, and Claire had him backed by pointing the gun towards him. This fired him up even more. But then, he also realized, if Claire shot the gun towards him, it was sure she would die by the impact of the heavy gun herself. He then transformed and surrendered himself. Shuichi bandaged his wounds. When he woke up, he humbly asked them to kill him. But Claire refused and instead asked him to write down his name and address and also hand her his phone. But unfortunately, the manly person didn't have one. All of this was being noticed by another monster, who was also secretly clicking pictures of them. All three of them were caught off guard by this giant monster. But this was not that big of a problem, as the big guy quickly finished off the monster, who was claiming to be very strong. Then, Claire asks the guy to help them look for coins, and he agrees. He praised Shuichi for his bravery, by saying that he was a real man. Thus, he was now part of their team. Now, a masked woman is seen announcing some important things to fellow humans with special abilities. Actually, they were a group, who negotiated with other members to find the coins, so that they could put an end to this silly game for good. A member was skeptical, but a new member was shown entering their group, and this new member was none other than Shuichi and Claire. Next, a boy is being contacted by Claire. Actually, this boy was one of the victims of Pseudo, the monster who was killed by the big guy. Claire assured him that they were his friends and not enemies and convinced both of them to meet. This was how she was able to join this group, as the guy was also a part of the same group. The big guy informed them that he wasn't going to help any random group, but the both of them. This worked in their favor. Amidst all of this, it was still not clear as to why Claire's sister was obsessed with Shuichi and wanted to get inside of him. But now, they face another problem as the group that they were about to join had a strict rule that they had to revert back to their normal forms, which meant revealing that they were actually two people inside the costume. After a bit of discussion, the both of them decide it would be best if only Claire revealed herself for now. All of them were shocked when they saw a normal human come out of the costume, but Claire temporarily agreed to their pact. She assured them that, if they weren't shady people, the other gatherer, which was Shuichi, would also enter into their pact. This made the others a bit suspicious of their activities. Claire had a doubt as to why most of them were looking like regular human beings even after their transformation, but the girl explained that each one has their own different form. Meanwhile, on the other hand, another girl started to pet Shuichi, who understood that Shuichi was a kind person. One guy present there was afraid of Shuichi, while the other guy was sure that Shuichi was harmless. On the other hand, the girl who went with Claire started to undress herself because apparently she had the power to make people keep their promises. Claire was pretty straightforward about the fact that she wasn't able to trust this girl and her other tricks and her actions made her question everything even more. The girl asks Claire if she was an acquaintance of Aikachi. Claire pretended that she was an acquaintance to Aikachi, but after a while she understood that the other girl was dead serious when she said she made other people keep their promises. If someone breaks their promises, made to the girl, the person instantly dies. This made her rethink her decisions, and even panic a bit, as Claire asked for the girl's phone. The other girl, who was with Shuichi kept petting him and was crazy over how cute the monster form of Shuichi looked. This made Shuichi very flustered and uncomfortable at the same time. Now, as soon as Claire returned to Shuichi, the other girl quickly backed off and Shuichi handed her the phone. She headed back to the other girl and showed photos of her elder sister, Alina. The other girl instantly recognized her sister and demanded that she would share as much information as possible with her, only if she joined their group. Claire was smart. Not easily shaken and beautiful as well, which would mean adding her to the group would be very beneficial for the long run. She proceeded to lie down so that they could start the ceremony. She had an unusual power which was very different from the other monsters. The reason was, earlier, she had a relationship with a teacher which was very secretive. She made the mistake of sharing it with her best friend, who couldn't keep her promise. This caused her lover to commit suicide, thus her gaining this power. On the other hand, the girl was still sitting beside Shuichi and considered him to be basically an animal only. Shuichi asked her about the pact, but she couldn't reveal the secret. She continued to add that Shuichi was free to ask her all he wanted about her personal life, but nothing else about the group. She reveals that her only reason to find coins was to protect the safety of her friends and family. Further, she also asks Shuichi's help in recovering her purse that she lost in the forest. Shuichi somewhat related to her, and decided to help her using his strong sense of smell. As they walked up to the mountains, the girl was losing more of her stamina. When she finally revealed her true self, she was a cute, fragile girl with soft animal ears. She was quite embarrassed of this form, and Shuichi too thought of her as a weirdo initially. She only wanted to communicate with the animals. Shuichi began searching for her wallet, but Yashioka, the girl, insisted that she should tag along with him. 
but this would only slow him down, so Yoshioka suggested that she get inside of him. Now, all of this was being monitored by the secret admirer of Yoshioka, the guy from the school. He was super jealous and insecure of what was happening between the both of them. Slowly Yoshioka undressed and got inside Shuichi's costume. As Yoshioka was inside him, he realized his chemistry with Claire was way better and it was way easier to move around and connect with Claire. Meanwhile, Claire somehow managed to get the other woman off of her and began the official ceremony. She proceeds to bring out a choker, which would blend into the skin of Claire, but if she dared to reveal their secrets, she would automatically die. She went ahead and wore the choker. On the other hand, Shuichi rushes off to look for Yoshioka's wallet. But unfortunately another gatherer, Subaru, had found her wallet already. After the choker ceremony was done, the girl finally began to reveal the secrets about Claire's sister. Actually, the girl was classmates with Alina. Alina, according to her, was the kindest soul she ever met. When she transferred to a new school, after experiencing a traumatic situation with the suicide of her lover, Alina was the only one who made an effort to talk to her and make her feel loved and she began to feel like she wasn't alone anymore. It came out as a huge shock to her because she couldn't believe Alina had turned into a monster and killed her own parents. Subaru, on the other hand, had found Yoshioka's purse but was disappointed when he found out the purse had only 2,000 yen. Shortly he had a fight with his group member. But it was cut short by Alina, who also happened to be a part of their group. Subaru decided to go home then, as he was very tired. When she left, Alina asked her partner to not get angry with her as he was still a child. As Shuichi was still looking for her purse, Yashioa asked if he had ever encountered evil people, to which he confessed that he had also killed one of them. It was hard for her to believe, as she thought of him as a very kind, pure-hearted soul. All of a sudden, Shuichi got the smell of the similar blood. But this time it was way more dangerous and walking towards it would be like suicide. He instantly recognized Alina's scent and other similar powerful scents from the same direction. It was a bad situation as the scent of Yashioka's purse also came from the same direction. It was hopeless, but Yashika started to panic and had a nervous breakdown with the situation they were in. Shuichi, regardless of his fear, decided to take back her purse somehow and also promised to protect Yashioka. On the other hand, at the abandoned building, the group has officially welcomed Claire as their newest member. As the other guy comes up to introduce herself, she inquires about her friend, to which another member says that he and Yashioka had left an hour ago and still didn't return. It was a bit odd of Shuichi to go away from the place without informing Claire. But upon further inspection, she got to know about the powers of the bowl cut guy, who showed the whole footage that he recorded through his superpowers. She watched the whole footage and decided to go and see for herself what they were up to, because she was sure that it was Shuichi who had himself wrapped up in another problem. The others warned Claire that it wasn't safe for her at all, so they send Yoda to accompany her, who was a bit skilled in fighting. Meanwhile, Shuichi is seen rushing at full speed, towards the direction from which the scent was coming, as he reached an opening. There were two different paths which had the same scent, but fortunately, the scent which had Yashioka's purse was alone. This is when Subaru showed himself in front of the both of them. They were surprised that this person was only a kid, but this was not a normal kid. Soon he turned into a double-headed monster, which he called Mom and Dad, but this was not all. They attacked both of them, but Shuichi tried his best to protect Yashioka, which wasn't enough because Shuichi had sustained enough damage in the process. It was a horrific sight, as the boy mercilessly squashed Shuichi into the ground, and he was totally covered in blood. On the other hand, Claire was panting and struggling to get up the mountain but Yoda was trying to use this chance to hit on her. Claire was also very confused as to why someone would reveal their identity so easily to someone. It was easy, as Yoda didn't actually have any family or friends to protect, his identity was no secret. Initially he was worried about Claire, as he was the only fighting member in their group, and it was his job to protect all of them. As Shuichi laid squished down flat on the ground, he started to take a more dangerous form as he merged with Yashika. The form was scary, had a black figure and also short pink hair, and a scary smile. This shocked Subaru. This creature let out a large scream which alerted both Alina and Claire and the both of them rushed towards the direction from which the sound came. This monster became a metamorphose and started attacking Subaru. He even managed to hit a few shots at Subaru's alien form but was again blown off by his powers. For some reason, the rage behind them was unexplained and this rage fueled their powers a lot. It was due to this rage that Shuichi was determined to avenge what Subaru had done to Yashioka. Due to their merging, he suddenly knew everything about this girl. With this sudden surge of energy, Yashioka and Shuichi were able to corner him when suddenly their fight was stopped by Alina, who reminded him of his actual role. After seeing Alina, Shuichi was again filled with rage and the urge to kill Alina, but Yashioka suddenly stopped him from doing so. They collapsed while Alina and Subaru left the scene. The alien had started getting dreams now as well. 
Flare and Yoda finally reach the spot to find Shuichi and Yashioka lying unconscious. Flashbacks of Shuichi's memories are shown. It was his first day at cream school and he was already late there. But, surprisingly, his teacher was a very friendly woman. They chatted casually for a while, when the other students also arrived. A huge rush of social anxiety began to hit Shuichi when he saw the other students. All of a sudden he heard someone call out his name and that was when he snapped out of his unconscious dream to reality. It was actually Claire calling out his name. As he woke up, he saw Claire sitting by his side, and Chihiro Yashioka by the tree and was surprised by the presence of Yoda. After returning to the base, Shuichi was also made part of their group officially by performing the ceremony and handing over the choker around his neck. Upon asking, the both of them could not even remember a single thing and had seemed to have forgotten everything mid-fight. They only remembered meeting Subaru and starting to fight him. Aikachi seems really pissed at Shuichi, but Yoda praises him for not ditching his comrades. Now he also was introduced to the other members of the group. The huge monster bunny was actually a small boy who loved gardening and flowers. He had the power to manipulate earth and its vegetation at his will. This guy, Iso, gifted Shuichi a small plant and also asked if he visited the Yamada Cram School. Actually, Isao had noticed Shuichi from a young age playing with his friends as he happened to live in the same area. He confessed that he never had the courage to go talk to them, which was weird because Shuichi straight up denied having any such memories. Next, there was another girl who had the power to make herself invisible, whose name was Ahara. This girl seemed really familiar, and actually she was the girl who was the cashier at their local convenience store. Finally, the leader introduces herself as Sayaka Koyanagi. All of them seemed friendly. They started to assume different scenarios to what may have happened in the fight between Subaru and Shuichi. But one thing was clear, they had previously underestimated the scenario involving the coins. This was way more serious than they had anticipated, but this didn't mean that they would back down. Later all of them began to showcase their skills, but all of them were very impressed by the skills demonstrated by Shuichi and Claire. After a hectic day, all of them decided to head home. Later Claire decided to ask Yashioka about the truth, as she suspected that she was lying. Yashika said that Shuichi and her were completely different and there was no way that the both of them could actually truly become one with each other. This frustrated Claire, who showed her anger clearly to Shuichi. While returning home, Shuichi could sense her anger and both of them sat down to have dinner. She expressed her anger and jealousy clearly to Shuichi. While heading back home, he met with his friend, who seemed totally different from what he seemed at school. The next day at school, Shuichi spotted Nana struggling with her cycle chain when he stepped down to help her out. After helping her out, he also sensed Aikachi was stalking and recording him. He climbed up to the terrace to confront Aikachi, who was clearly jealous of him. Now, Shuichi had discovered his true strength, which was to protect the powerless. Now Chihiro had somehow got hold of Alina's number and decided to contact her. Hearing Shuichi's name, Alina felt really uncomfortable and didn't continue the conversation. Alina headed out for a bit to get some fresh air, while Subaru was still at their base in the abandoned building in the forest. As she got out of her room, she called back Chihiro and let her know that Shuichi had a very special power which was to merge with someone and intensify their power. Chihiro also informed her that she had actually gotten her phone number from Shuichi, because Shuichi still had faded memories about a girl with a shadow figure. This enraged Alina, as she was convinced that Chihiro was straight up lying to her and playing with her. Chihiro explained to her that she has seen pieces of Alina in his memory for some reason, locked away by his mind and could not access or remember parts of his memory. This truth made her nervous and really emotional, but she refused to join their group when proposed by Chihiro, because she had different goals than Shuichi. This was when other members of her group confronted her about the kill that they lost today. After spending two months in the forest, they had only managed to secure five coins, but apart from that, they also discovered that these coins were found in a certain pattern which was probably the trail of the spaceship. So it was their first goal to find the spaceship. Sayaka, their group leader, announces that the next main motive of their group would be to look for the coins intelligently as they weren't a strong group, so they had to make up for their lack of strength by presence of mind. They had come up with different strategies to obtain a hundred coins the fastest and to end this cycle of meaningless fights with monsters. She also adds that none of them should forget that they all are humans at the end of the day. As they march forward, they notice another sign of a huge rock trail which was probably left out after an intense fight over the area. Aikachi, meanwhile, doesn't stop getting suspicious of the newly added duo, Shuichi and Claire. He was sure that the both of them were hiding something from him. As they progress towards the woods, they come across another marked territory, which seemed very familiar to Claire for some reason. They were afraid to cross the area that was marked turf, but on the other hand, it was absolutely necessary to cross the area to the other side of the mountain as this was the only way they could reach the spaceship. 
The marked turf only indicated that the area ahead was important and full of coins. Akachi begins to protest as usual and gets into a small argument with Claire. Sayaka tries to calm them down and asks Aikachi to show them the footage of the monsters that he had spotted in the forest for them to analyze the whole situation more precisely. They began to advance, with their main goal being to avoid meaningless fights and collect as many coins as possible. Sayaka appoints Aikachi to look after any enemies through his special powers, lenses, which he was glad to do. Chihiro was soon tired, and while climbing up a rocky terrain, Sayaka was about to fall when she was saved by the invisible girl. After a while of walking, all of them decided to take a rest for some time near a stream. Isao grew out a watermelon tree and all of them began to feast on those delicious watermelons to nourish their bodies and get their energy back. Aikachi was reluctant to try out the watermelon and use his break to chill out a bit, as he was pretty serious about his watch guard duty. Isao and Yoda both convinced him to take some time off his duty and eat to replenish his energy. When all of this discussion was taking place, Shuichi advised that the both of them should try to bond more with their teammates, while Chihiro was debating on a more serious topic. She decided that she should let her team know that there was someone who had already collected the 100 coins. But as soon as she was about to speak, she was interrupted and couldn't speak up at all. She felt pretty disappointed, but continued to walk anyway. As they were walking, there were no enemies, almost as if it was all a setup. Claire suggested they should take the other route instead, because it was a bit odd for the sign to be in front of a dense forest where chances of finding coins were low anyway, than in front of an open riverbank where finding coins was much easier and also spotting enemies was also much easier. It was then that the sudden realization hit them that all of them were reversed, trapped by their enemies who wanted to lure out weaker gatherers. Suddenly, on the cliff of a hill, a group of strong and dangerous gatherers are seen waiting for the right moment to attack them. As soon as they spot their enemy, they start running away from the spot but this was noticed by their enemy. The enemy suggested that they target only one person of the group, which would be enough to collect coins from the group. The enemy group seemed stronger and also had Shuich's group outnumbered. All of a sudden, a creepy-looking caterpillar-like monster rushes off at full speed to attack the team fleeing from the site. The caterpillar-like creature was so strong and fast that it didn't take much of a time to catch up to them. This thing was so creepy to even look at, and had them cornered all of a sudden. Claire, once again, was pretty fast to understand their strategy, that the caterpillar monster was only stalling them, so that his teammates could catch up to him. She wasted no time and started to attack the monster, but it was too strong to be defeated by just the both of them. Then, surprisingly, the monster captured their leader Koyanagi and used her as a hostage. The monster begins to threaten them to hand over their coins, so that they could survive. The monster then threw a scary thing towards them, which was a human head detached. This frightened all of them. This was a girl, who had made the mistake to fight their boss in their territory. Seeing all of this, Yoda was enraged, and he decided to fight this monster head on. Actually, Yoda was a powerhouse, but didn't usually use his power as he didn't like hurting people for no reason. He began fighting Morita and beating the hell out of the giant insect. It was a splendid and satisfying sight to watch. He freed their leader and continued to beat up the insect. As they left the spot, they also buried the dead corpse before they left. When the enemy group finally reached the spot, they were disappointed, but soon found them at no more than 500 meters from their distance. Morita's jaw was dislocated. The group was pretty barbaric and didn't even hesitate when it came to the point of killing their own teammate. But, all of this was stopped by their boss, who decides to avenge his teammate and teach the other group a lesson. Next, Shuich's group put a natural barricade which they thought would prevent the enemy from following them. But all of a sudden, a huge gorilla monster came rushing to attack the innocent barrier maker, which enraged Yoda who rushed to punch him right in the face, but wasn't that effective at all. All of them were terrified with the monster in front of them. As Claire was getting inside of Shuichi, this ape noticed her and aggressively marched towards her. As the beast gorilla approached them, they seemed really frightened, but the beast kept on asking them different questions because he was confused about the pretty girl who climbed up inside of the stuffed costume. This was an unnatural transformation that he didn't witness that much. Shuichi couldn't remain calm, even after getting a lot of warnings from Claire. He decides to shoot the gorilla at point-blank range. This was his mistake, as this was easily dodged by the beast. This was not an ordinary enemy. This one had a different evilness inside of it and also looked hell strong. The gun was then taken by the beast, who pointed it at Chihiro, seeing which Shuichi was forced to transform back. To their horror, they were all suddenly surrounded by their enemy from all sides. The enemy was in a large group, and hugely outnumbered them. The beast kept making unrealistic demands with all of them. First, he explained how other gatherers who entered their turf had to hand over all the coins to the beast, which would make him more powerful, using which he could make them powerful instead. He had a simple motto, which was to work in the favor of idiots, who didn't have a complex way of thinking things out. 
His most favorite people happened to be idiots, and after he became stronger, he made sure that their dreams could come true, like having money, women, cars, anything they desired. All of this was happening. When Yoda and Nisao were still lying unconscious from being knocked out by this monster, this monster now began to show his rage, and asks them to choose one of their teammates to die for the damage that they had done to his underling, Morita. He had come here to avenge him, and if they didn't pick out one, all of them were about to die. He was such a heartless beast, but Claire tried to smartly question him which made him take an instant liking to her. As they moved away from the scene temporarily, to decide who was going to be their sacrifice or to rather discuss the best move that they could be doing next, it was really a very frightening situation. The unconscious guys had woken up by now, and Yoda was offering to fight all of them by himself, which was a pretty bad and foolish idea, but sacrificing them was not a good idea as well. Akachi freaked out continuously and implied that they needed to go ahead and select someone for a sacrifice or else all of them would die. That was when Claire agreed with him, and implied that he should be the one to sacrifice himself since he was so adamant at sacrificing someone. This thought also freaked Aikuchi out, as he didn't predict that this was going to happen to him. Actually, the boss of the enemy was pretty much a loser in his real life, but after finding the coin, he became stronger and also felt happier than ever before. Different people keep proposing different ideas to make sure that they escape out of the situation like the invisible girl, suggesting she used her invisibility to their advantage but it was also a very bad idea to do so as well. Not just that, all other ideas seemed pretty baseless, while Shuichi kept thinking what could he do about the whole situation. Amidst all of this, Claire went to Isao who was sitting in an isolated area feeling depressed. She had an idea and wanted Isao to grow a certain type of plant, which made him panic a bit. Shuichi followed her to find Isao, when he noticed this beautiful flower garden that was grown by Isao. Once again, this move made Isao speechless and really traumatized, which made it very hard to speak. Not just that, Aikachi was also very cautious of this move, which seemed strange and was still suspicious of Claire. Shuichi, on the other hand, knew that Claire was definitely up to something. Claire let him know that this was their chance to escape and to let everyone know that all of them were now safe. Shuichi realized that she was doing this only so that all the dirty work was done by her hands and not by Shuichi. Shuichi pulled her in for a hug and reminded her that both of them were one. This was when, the enemy group had finally realized that they had begun to flee from the place when suddenly, Aikachi came frightened to the enemy group to take their help so that he and Chihiro could be saved. Meanwhile, the other group members were fleeing and Isao let them know that he had planted oleander flowers, which were pretty common but upon burning, the smoke from these flowers were going to poison the whole forest. Akachi was about to reveal this secret to the enemy when the choker on his neck choked and killed him. Madoka now decided to kill the other group. As they began speeding up to follow their enemies, he realized that most of his teammates were now under the influence of the poisonous smoke which was making them nauseous and throwing up. After a while, he even started to panic and felt nauseous from the poison. Even in this tough situation, Madoka keeps his promise, which was to not betray his team and save all of them. All of these moves were predicted by Claire way before, so she could execute the plan smoothly. All the others looked really disappointed and the episode ends with Claire realizing finally that her sister wanted nothing more but to be saved by her. Alina is now seen meeting up with the alien once again. The alien was still reading some comic books. He lets her know that Shuichi and her little sister had been there to meet him and not just that. He was also very impressed by the different sorts of powers that these humans ask for and the uniqueness to all of it. At the same time, he was also very impressed by Claire, who despite being a normal human being still managed to save her friends from the mess. Alina was pissed at this alien as everything that was happening around them was, actually, his fault to some extent. But the alien explained that actually it wasn't his fault, but mostly the fault of the humans who didn't know how to take care or use their power. When Alina threatens to kill this alien, he reminds her even if he was killed, she could do nothing to undo the past. Meanwhile, Shuich's team was still not sure if all the other members had died due to the effect of the smoke, and his smell detection power was also very hard to operate due to the presence of strong smoke in the area. Claire insists on going ahead and finding the 100 coins, but Koyanagi instructs that all of them should leave the place for now, as nobody was in their right mindset to go out and hunt for 100 coins. As they left the forest, they still couldn't reach Aikachi, unaware of the fact that he was dead now. Later at night, Sayaka felt pretty depressed, and felt as if everything that was happening was her fault. Ehara on the other hand, comforts her and reassures her that nothing that was happening was her fault at all. Yoda and Isao were also together, where Yoda was feeling so sorry and guilty for killing those people, indirectly. Yoda tries to cheer him up by praising him for defending them. He confessed that the sick and twisted idea was proposed by Claire. And not just her, Isao was also pretty weirded out by Shuichi as well. Because Shuichi kept insisting that he was the only student back at his cram school, 
which sounded too fake to be true. Suddenly a train approached near them and blinded both of them. Again, when Claire and Shuichi head back home, they were worried about what was going to happen next. But again, the next day, when they arrived at school, they behaved like nothing had really happened. That was when they also noticed Chihiro at their same school. Chihiro and Shuichi then went up to the terrace to talk about the coins, when Shuichi advised her to stay away from him so as to not be spotted by the enemies. Both of them went on with their usual lives but there was something strange. His friend Abukawa was still missing for three to four days. All the other students of the school had also noticed him hanging out with some sketchy guys from the other school. All of this was happening, when suddenly Shuichi got the news that they found Abukawa's burnt body near the river. Abukawa was actually one of the enemies, burned by Claire's group. Next, Shuichi met up with the alien who was surprised to see him without his usual partner, Claire. He confronted the alien and wanted to know what made him choose this weird monstrous form, to which the alien replied that he should start to let things go and also if he wanted the alien could turn him back into his former self and he could give him all the coins that he had. Someone was watching them from a distance, but Shuichi continued to explain to him that their only motive to collect coins was to make life a little better for everyone as at the end of the day, everyone was human. Before he leaves, he promises that he would bring an end to all the madness that was caused by the alien. When he left the place, he finally sensed and asked his stalker to come out. This stalker was one of the men of the group that was burned to death by Claire and her group. This man was here to find Claire and avenge Madoka. He also revealed that Abukawa was one of the best men he knew, and that having Abukawa by his side changed a lot of things. But having his team killed mercilessly was nothing to be forgotten. Shuichi easily took this guy down, and later also mustered the courage to shoot this guy down, so that he wouldn't cause any more problems for his friends and especially Claire. The alien also started to remember the days from back when he met a school student, who was kind to him and who was his first friend. There was this girl named Hanoka, who had actually given the alien the idea to start the vending machine game in order to get other people to help him find his way back to his planet. Hanoka had also brought her classmates with her to help out. One of these classmates turned out to be a protector near where the ship crashed, and this person seems to have a power where it is seen that he uses the soul of Hanoka to achieve his goal by killing people who try to interfere with his goal. Alina's group is now aware of the guy who was protecting the ship and apparently, this guy also had already collected a hundred coins. The main goal of Alina's team was to obtain the coins from this guy. When Alina lets her other teammate know that he was also once part of their friend's circle and referred to him as her old friend. Next scene, Naoto and Kaido. Two high schoolers are seen talking about how one of their girlfriends has been acting weird lately and wondered if maybe it was because they had come after watching a movie. Kaido suggests that Naoto shouldn't be thinking that much about his girlfriend and not let things get to his head. There is a major twist to the whole plot now, as it is revealed that Shuichi and Kaido, the guy who's already collected 100 coins, Alina all were part of the same friends group. Actually, all of them were part of the same cram school, Yamada cram school, where the kind old teacher would teach the students and the students had formed a strong friend group as well. This friend group included Kaido, Eiko, Naoto, Shuichi, Alina, where Eiko and Naoto were dating. They had a pretty strong bond, and Kaido missed his group, so he had the great idea to reconnect with his classmates. And the only way that was possible was through Naoto, who still had connections with all of his friends. When all his friends finally meet, Kaido still thinks that Eiko is the same and all of them praise Shuichi for his intelligence. They all headed up to the nearby park, but there was still one friend missing, who was Hanoka, the alien's friend. Kaido wondered where she was, but to his surprise, Hanoka's father was arrested for a crime and Hanoka had just suddenly disappeared from the city. Nothing made sense to him and this information was too much to take in at once. He was disappointed in his friends for not letting him know about this incident, most importantly because all of them knew that Kaido has secret feelings for Hanoka. Eiko tried to change the subject without taking his feelings into consideration and suggested that all of them go to karaoke. This pissed him off, but the rest of his friends advised him to move on, as it was the best thing for him to do. But Kaido couldn't just let things slide away easily. Despite knowing what his friends said was true, he decided to dig further and find out exactly where Hanoka was. He got to know that Hanoka was staying with her relatives at a nearby town. But still he didn't have any luck finding her as well, as her relatives seemed to hate Hanoka and claimed that she had gone missing all of a sudden. Kaido remembered the weird pattern in Eiko's behavior and how her hair twirling seemed to resemble Hanoka. He was sure that Eiko had something to do with the disappearance of Hanoka and so, he decided to find out by himself. After following her around for a while, he came across the alien and finally got to know about the whole truth. The situation seemed more messed up than he had initially anticipated. Actually, the person imitating Eiko was actually Hanoka and that would explain the different behavioral pattern noticed by her boyfriend. 
The alien then explained to all her friends that, since Hanoka had brought him a coin, he had transformed her into someone different and made her disappear completely. After this huge shocking revelation, all of the friends chose to look the other way and ignore everything that was happening. But this wasn't acceptable to Kaido, as he knew why Hanoka had killed the real Eiko. All of them thought that Hanoka was actually jealous of Eiko and thus killed her to take her place. So one day, Kaido decides to confront Hanoka and kill her instead. He also finds the burying spot of the real Eiko. It was a very tough decision for him, but he decided to serve justice to Hanoka. Later it was revealed that the real Eiko had actually committed suicide and left her will in Hanoka's name. All of this meant that Kaido had killed his beloved for nothing. Actually, Hanoka was Eiko's best friend and when she committed suicide, Hanoka was the only person to know and she asked the alien to change her into Eiko so that all her family members suspect nothing and she figured that no one would care if she disappeared instead. She was wrong because her friend Kaido cared a lot about the real Hanoka and didn't want her to disappear. Now, Kaido had once again approached the alien with another coin. And at the same time, a glowing girl had appeared in the town who was erasing people who didn't know her. This was a bit worrisome for Alina, Shuichi and Naoto. They decided to stop Kaido. Back to the present, Claire was investigating the Yamada Cran school when she found the exact stuffed animal that was the monster form of Shuichi. On the other hand, Shihiro had once again called Alina for an important conversation. Eiko's mother is now being confronted by the glowy girl, who is actually the soul of Hinoka. But unfortunately, even after Alina's efforts, she was unable to save her mother and the glowy girl slowly erased Eiko's mother due to her not being able to remember Hanoka. On the other hand, all the group members had come up for a meet, but Sayaka didn't show up, which was a bit odd. Shuichi now makes a rather bizarre request to hand him over the coins he collected so that he could make it to a hundred and everything would be taken care of by Shuichi. Shuichi was really serious about everything he said. When he and Claire were headed back to their place, Claire asked to spend the night at his place and Shuichi accepted, while pulling her in for a hug. Claire could also feel the change within Shuichi. As Claire and Shuichi head towards his home, Claire is taken aback by the condition of the house in which Shuichi was living. The house was practically abandoned with dust all over the place. There was no sign of his parents or anyone else in the house which wasn't how a normal household should be at all. He couldn't even remember the last time that he saw his own parents. Claire broke down crying when suddenly something came over Shuichi and he started to rip apart Claire's clothes and acted crazy but was taken aback with random flashes from his memory. Suddenly the chokers came off of both of them and a call vibrated from Sayaka who asked to meet them the next day. Actually, they had planned to collect all the coins and give it all to Alina the next day as well. The next day, both of them go to school as usual, but Shuichi doesn't feel normal like his usual self at all. He was confused about having flashbacks with Alina. Alina and Naoto, on the other hand, keep discussing how it was in their best interest if Hanoka's soul couldn't find out about the existence of Shuichi. Next day at school, Mifune was still upset at seeing Claire and Shuichi together, but then Ihara was caught by Claire trying to spy on her using her invisibility. On his way back, Shuichi found Yoda and Isao, who directed her to go to the riverbank to find Chihiro. Isao was really emotional during the whole exchange with Shuichi. As Claire rushes off to the riverbank, she is stopped by Mifune and on the other hand, Chihiro is seen handing over all the coins to Alina when they were interrupted by Shuichi. This time, Shuichi was ready to face her. Mifune also dropped Claire near the riverbank with her cycle and headed back. As Shuichi starts to confront Alina about his memories and her involvement, she starts to deny everything. That was when Claire stepped in and showed the stuffed animal to Shuichi, which made his memories clear. Alina starts to fight them, but Shuichi now remembers the memories finally. Actually Shuichi's parents were also erased because of Hanoka's ghost, and Alina had to remove his memories completely to save him from being erased. Shuichi understood the burden that both these sisters were carrying with themselves. He assured them it was okay to share the burden and continued to fight with Alina. Claire and Shuichi had combined to fight off Alina, but this time they had more power that matched the power of Alina. When both of them were fighting, suddenly the ghost of Hanoka appeared, but this creature wasn't Hanoka at all. She was completely a different being. Even after being shot, she was still reappearing. At the last moment, Alina once again removes Shuichi's memories and then heads back. Shuichi promises to put an end to all of these with Claire. He wondered what was going to become of this town, with so many different creatures roaming around freely, but even amongst all this he knew that he wasn't the main character. So somehow he had to reach the site, where the spaceship crashed to take care of this whole mess and put an end to it for good. 